especially if I'm introducing something, Anil will definitely uh, remember that. Uh, thanks, uh, Shikiri. With uh, that, so the next time also when we meet, I'm going to ask um, you to give feedback or um, how we can make this better. That kind of a comment, like how she killed it. Thank you, she killed it. Um, Thank you. So um, please come forward so we can all help ourselves. Right. So with that in mind, sitting in any comfortable posture. I softly closed. <clears throat> Why are we here? <clears throat> Ask that question. And answer the question in the positive. Not because we are trying to solve a problem. But what is it that the positive outcome? I want to be healthy. I want to be happy. More energetic. Calm. Attentive. And remember, recollect those positive aspects that we want to bring out from within. It's not something that we are going to acquire from outside. It's there in all of us. All the positive aspects are already there. And we want to have them express themselves. And Hatha Yoga practice that we are here to participate in is a way to remove the obstructions for the positive aspects already in us to express themselves. Three deep breaths. Where do you feel the breath the most? There's no right answer. Is your posture firm enough? And yet, are you able to relax with every exhalation? Namaskar, Mudra. Tilting your head forward, gently open your eyes. Inhaling, take the arms by the side, palms going up, looking up. Exhaling, palms coming down, looking down. Inhaling up. Exhaling down. Inhaling up. Exhaling down. Inhaling up, exhaling down. One more round, inhaling up, 
exhaling down. Release, <clears throat> palms up on the knees. Come to Sukhasana, if you're not already in Sukhasana. Standing comfortably with palms up, back of the hands on your thighs and knees. Upper arms hanging loose by the side, elbows by the side of your body. Inhaling, look up. Exhaling, look down. Five rounds. Speed is not what you are going for. You are allowing the breath to lead the movement. Slowly and comfortably, as much as you can. With awareness to all the muscles that are helping you, inhale, look up. Exhale, look down. Five rounds. Make it a smooth inhalation, not jerky, not swift. And then you are struggling for movement. Make it smooth. As you inhale, your chest rises up. And as you exhale, abdomen relaxes, chest relaxes. Five rounds. After completing five rounds, bring your head back to normal posture. And then inhaling at the center, exhaling, your right ear is going toward your right shoulder. Inhale center. Exhaling, left ear goes to your left shoulder. Nose pointing forward, inhale center, four more rounds. Smooth inhalations, smooth exhalations. And you're not forcing it, you're allowing the weight of the head to stretch the side of your neck. At the end of inhalation, you just need to let go a bit to feel the stretch more. As you exhale, allow the head to fall down to the side and stretch. After completing, bring your head comfortably to the center. <clears throat> now, take your hands onto your shoulders, hands onto your shoulders, like this, if you can. And then get your elbows close in the front. Inhaling, take the elbows back and up, inhale. Exhaling all the way up and going down to the front, elbows closing down in the front, five rounds. Inhaling back. Elbows, both elbows back and up. Exhaling, elbows closing down in the front. Feel the shoulder blades and shoulders moving, allowing you to do this Kriya. Speed is not what we are looking for. As much as you can take the elbows back and up, as much as you can. Exhaling. Elbows to the front. After completing five rounds. We'll go the other way. Get the fingers on the shoulders. Elbows to the front. Then go inhaling. Take the elbows up and back. Exhaling. Bring the elbows forward. Opposite way. Total five rounds. After completing, release the arms down, palms, Facing up, 
right arm up, palms facing toward the front, and stretching up without or relax your right hip downward, but middle finger of the right hand going up. Five, feel the stretch on the right side. Four, three, two, one. Release your right arm. Left arm up, left palm facing the front, and then stretching up. Relax your left hip and yet take the left middle finger toward the ceiling. Five, four, three, two, one. Release your left arm. Take your right arm behind you, close to the body. Left hand on the right knee. Straighten up the spine and twist toward your right side. And look over your right shoulder. Five, four, three, two, one. Inhaling, come to center. Palms up. Take a deep breath, exhale. Left arm around your back, close to the body. Right hand on the left knee. Straighten up your spine and twist. Looking over your left shoulder. Five, four, three, two, one. Inhaling, come to center. Palms up. Take a deep breath, exhale. Eyes softly closed, watch your breath. Simple postures. What we have done is to do some neck movements, spine movements. What are the changes, if any? Take a deep breath, exhale. Gently open your eyes, come up to standing. Front of the mat, Tadasana. <clears throat> Eyes softly closed. Watch the weight on your feet. There's no right answer. See the weight distribution on your feet transferring the weight transferring into the mat through your feet. Become aware of all the parts of your feet that are transferring the weight onto the mat. Gently open your eyes. Namaskar Mitra. Allowing the breath to lead you in Surya Namaskara, three rounds of Surya Namaskara begin. First two rounds. Don't push yourself to finding the edges. Third round, you can explore. You can even pause in the posture. Just a bit. 
and access the spirit of the posture just a bit. With no aggression, with full awareness and diligence, but no aggression. If you already completed, separate your feet comfortably. Stand relaxed. And observe the breath. Normalizing on its own. That lie down on your back and relax. Lie down on your back, legs together, feet relaxed. Arms close to the body, palms facing down. We are not in Shavasana. We'll get to Shavasana. We will practice Shavasana at the end. Keep your eyes open. Watch the breath. Let's practice some leg raises. Take three deep breaths. Um, bring all your attention to how the entire body responds with something like a leg raise. I keep telling you that everything is connected. You can directly experience the connections in a practice like a leg raise. Please pay attention to the entire body responding. <clears throat> Raise your right leg up. See if you can keep the knee straight as much as you can. If your back is straining too much, if your back is straining so much that your chin is going up, then bend the knee and bring the chin to normal posture, five, four, three, two, one. Consciously release the leg down to the ground. <clears throat> You're not letting your leg fall to the ground. You're consciously, just as you consciously, as you move the leg up, you're consciously moving the leg down. You're not allowing the gravity to take over. Left leg up. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Slowly release the left leg down to the ground. Right leg up. Bend the elbow so the toes are coming closer to the shin. Bend, sorry, bend your ankle so the toes are closer to the shin. This will activate your quad muscles. 
Now with your heel, make five circles. Make five circles with your heel. You can start with a, a small circle. No, with the heel. The entire leg going around. Entire leg moves around in a circle with the heel pointing up. Five circles. Start with small circles, and if you're feeling comfortable, you can widen the circle. The whole leg rotate, ro the whole leg circles. After completing five circles, slowly release the right leg down to the ground. Take a deep breath, exhale. Left leg up. Bend the ankle. Flexing ankle, as they call it technically, toes toward the shin, heel up toward the ceiling, using the entire leg, five circles. Start with small circle and then go wider. After completing five rounds, gently allow the left leg all the way down to the ground. If you are feeling the posture in your abdomen, you are doing it right. If you are feeling the posture on your back, slightly bend the knee and yet make the same circles. Now, <clears throat> bring the legs, both legs up. Separate the legs six inches apart. Just a little bit apart. And focus on your breathing. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Slowly release the legs down to the ground. Take a deep breath, exhale. Bring the legs up. Separate your feet a, a foot apart. Foot apart. And make five circles with both legs. Right leg going toward clockwise and left leg anti-clockwise. Rotate both legs. Not, um, not together. One leg going one direction, the other leg going the other direction. Yes. Five circles. Focus on your abdomen. And after that, bring the legs together, slowly release the legs down to the ground. Again, if you're feeling the posture in your abdomen, that's the intended spirit of the postures, these kriyas. <clears throat> Take a deep breath, exhale. One last posture, leg posture before we move on. Bring both legs up. Separate the legs as much as you can, like prasarita stands. Now toes are pointing toward the front wall. Your feet are facing the ceiling. The soles of your feet are Facing the ceiling. Five counts. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Slowly bring the legs together and release the legs. Take a deep breath, exhale. Roll on to your stomach. Preparing for Bhujangasana. Pause.
palms by the sides of your chest. Elbows pointing to the back. We are not going to get into Bhujangasana, but we are like the positions, the arm position, the chin position, the legs are as if we are in Bhujangasana, preparing for Bhujangasana. Now tuck your toes in. Adhomukeshvanasana. Make the usual adjustments, palms rooting to the mat. If you're standing on your toes, or those who are flexible enough, land the heels down. You can slightly bend the knees, allow the chest to move toward the knees, not the palms moving, only the chest is moving. The palms are rooted, they are the foundation. Look at your thumbs and move your seed bones away from your palms as much as you can. You are retracting the seed bones away. Your, your head is moving away from your palms and then allow the head to relax. Hanging the head down. You can even look at your navel if you can. Five deep breaths. Five. Four. Three, two, one. Drop your knees down, Marjorie. Bend your elbows down, head on the ground. Elbows down, all the way down, all the way down. Elbows all the way down, head relaxed. Elbows. Your arm, palms and elbows are on the ground and forehead on the ground in a relaxing posture. It's anahata variation, but for relaxing. Take a deep breath, exhale. Now bring your palms and elbows on the ground, shoulder width the pot. Palms and elbows on the ground, shoulder width the pot, preparing for Shishulasana. <clears throat> Keep looking at the ground. Lift your seat bones up toward the ceiling, straighten the knee up. Lift your seat bone, tuck your toes in, lift the seat bones up and straighten the knee and walk forward as much as you can. You can slightly bend the knee, walk forward. Bringing your spine vertically down, head is not touching the mat. Walk forward as much as you can, bringing your spine vertically down. Exhale completely, up, engage your abdomen. Five breaths, five, four, three, two, one, slightly walk back, drop your knees down, head down, forehead down, relax. Take a deep breath, exhale. Now bring the elbows <clears throat> shoulder width apart. He lift the head off the ground for now. Bring the elbows shoulder width apart. Interlace fingers. One of the little finger is on the ground. You can choose your favorite little finger to land on the ground. Now place your head down flat on the mat with the back of your head cupped by your fingers. Your, your, your palms are against the back of your head. Palms are firmly against the back of your head. Your flat portion of the head is on the mat. Now, Slowly 
lifting your knee, tuck your toes in and lift the knees off the ground and walk forward just as much as you can. And hold the posture. If it's too difficult, drop your knees down. Others, walk forward as much as you can and hold. Five, four, three, two, one. Walk back. Drop the knees down and head, forehead down, relax. Release the fingers, relax. Lie down on your stomach. and then roll on your back. What we just did is a very first step towards Sirasasana. We didn't go further, but you can keep practicing this. Warm up your core muscles with leg raises, Sushulasana and place the forehead and walk forward and stay there for a bit and getting used to having the, the roof of the head on the ground and the spine as vertical as you can is a good start with the, the three pronged stand with your elbows and fingers as a support for Salamba Sarasasana, as in supported Sarasasana. <clears throat> Three deep breaths. We'll practice, we'll approach we'll call Vipari the Karani as much as we can approach it. This is on the way to Sarvangasana. <clears throat> To the extent that you can approach this, approach it. Otherwise, you can simply do the leg raises. We will do the instructions first. <clears throat> Follow the instructions, take a deep breath, exhale. Bring the legs together, arms close to the body. Bring the legs together, lifting both legs up. Now take your legs overhead toward the front wall. Take the and then lifting your hips off the floor, place your palms on your glutes, elbows on the ground. Elbows on the ground, your palms are on your hips and glutes. Now bring the legs straighten up, straighten up. Legs are straight, vertically pointing. Your upper torso from neck to the hip is in a slant and the legs go straight up not quite um, in um, sarvangasana but viparita karani exhale completely chest breathing five four three two one Slowly release the hip and release the legs down. <clears throat> In Viparita Karani is also a very good posture for Bandha practice, Mula Bandha Asana, Uddhyana Bandha, and um, throat lock. Jalandara Bandha. Uddhyana Bandha is the upper abdominal lock. Mula Bandha is pelvic floor lock. With the legs 
straight up with the palms being support for the legs going straight up. From hip to neck is in a slant, like a 45 degree angle. You can practice if you've been practicing bandhas. It is a, a good posture, natural posture for applying all four, all three bandhas, Mula Bandha, Udhyana Bandha, um, and Jalandala Bandha. But others, let us just practice this one more time. Viparita Karani. And if you're if you are having too much trouble with this, just do leg raises that we did earlier. <clears throat> Bring the legs together. Raising the legs straight up. Take the legs toward the front of the wall, lifting your hips off the mat. Palms on your glutes. Elbows close to the body, not too far away from the body. From neck to hip, it's a slant. It's like a ramp and then the legs go straight up. And hold the posture, five breaths, five, four, three, two, one. Gently move your legs toward the front wall and then release the palm hold and release the hip down to the ground, release the legs down to the ground. Vipari, the Karani practice. Listen to your body. It's a counter posture, Matsyasana. <clears throat> Keep the legs together, arms close to the body, palms down, elbows down. Now, Climb on to the elbows, lifting the chest up. Climb on to the elbows, lift the chest up and place the elbows down, palms down. With the chest going higher, drop the head on the back, the roof of the head facing the floor. Your, your throat is open and stretched. Five, breathe, five deep breaths in Matsyasana, five. Four, three, two, one. Lift the head off the mat. Don't drag the head. Tuck your chin in and then release the head down. Sedu Bandha Sarvangasana practice. Take a deep breath, exhale. Bring the legs hip width apart and bend the knees. Heels close to the body. Heels close to the seat bones. Arms close to the body. Fingertips perhaps touching your heels. If they don't, it is okay. But keep the knees and feet, feet firmly on the mat. <clears throat> Flat and firm on the mat. And then next inhalation, lifting the hips off the floor, lifting it up toward the ceiling. Slide your arms just a bit underneath. Bend the elbows, place the palms on your glutes. Lifting the chest higher if you need to, to allow the palms to support your glutes. Feet flat on the mat. Chest bone, sternum comes up and meets with your chin. Five deep breaths, five. Four. Three. Two. One. Slowly release the hips down to the ground, release the legs.
hug the knees, rock back and forth. And next time you go forward, sit up with feet on the ground, hugging the knees. Now, feet flat on the ground, make the feet hip width apart. Place your palms behind you, fingers pointing to the back wall, fingers pointing to your feet. Feet are hip width apart. Next inhalation, lift the hips up like in Sarvang, Sedubandha Sarvangasana. Bring the from the knee to, to the roof of the head in one straight line parallel to the ground. Look up at the ceiling. Look up at the ceiling. Tuck your chin in and lengthen your spine. Lift the chest up. And then finally, if you're comfortable, drop your head. <clears throat> Hold the hip up, feet and palm rooting to the mat. Five deep breaths, five, four. Don't allow the chest to, create, uh, to slouch down. Chest up, hips up, three, two, one. Tuck your chin in. Tuck your chin in. Allow the hip gently to go down, but not all the way down. Don't allow the hip to touch the ground. Now feel the stretch on your back. Now round the shoulder forward. Shoulders rounding forward. And allow the hips to go downward, but round the shoulder to feel the stretch on your back. Five. Four. Three, two, one. Hip down, touch down. Sukhasana. Palms up. Chest. Raise the chest, chest, chest a bit to straighten up the spine. Allowing the upper back to find a relaxation. When the chest comes up, the head will balance properly. And the, when the head balances properly, the back of your shoulders might get a relaxation. It's all connected. There are muscles that connect from the center of the chest, the chest bone and the collar bone to the back of the head. And when you raise the chest just a bit up, it's called SCM, sternocleidomastoid muscle, will allow the head to balance more effortlessly. <clears throat> um, right foot on top, Ardha Padmasana. Take your hands back. Straighten up the spine. Inhale. Exhaling, bending forward. If you if you can allow the forehead to reach, that's good. If you can allow your chin to reach the ground, 
if you can do that, do that. In Yoga Mudra preparation, five, four, three, two, one. Inhaling, come up. Release the arms. Sukhasana. Left foot on top, Ardha Padmasana. Take the arms back, catch the left wrist with the right hand. Inhale, straighten up the spine. Exhaling, bending forward in preparation for Yoga Mudrasana. Forehead relaxed as much as you can. Your spine rounding. Five, four, three, two, one. Inhale, come up. Release the arms. Sukhasana. Those who can Padmasana, others choose Ardha Padmasana. No aggression. It is okay if you are not able to get into Padmasana now. Even if you were able to earlier, take your hands back, catch the left wrist with the right hand, straighten up the spine, inhale, exhaling, bending forward, and finally relax the head down. Yoga Mudra Asana, five, four, three, two, one. Inhaling, come up. Lie down on your back. Shavasana. Make any final movements that you feel like you need to practice to relieve any tension. So you can practice Shavasana without needing to move at all. The most important posture for the day is Shavasana. Practice with alert mind. Body consciously relaxed. Allow the breath. Observe. Relax. Relax. 
Gently to Mother Shavasana. If you're sitting in any comfortable posture, seated posture, take your hands back. Catch the left wrist with the right hand. Inhale, exhaling, bending forward, thanking Mother Earth. Inhaling, come up. Rub your palms vigorously. Massage your closed eyes and gently blink your eyes open. Namaste. Have a good evening. Thank you all so much. Thank you. 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 Bye. Yeah.